Well, welcome back to the studio and the session on our koi painting. I'm going to kind of show you my color mixtures for the lily pads. If I can remember what I mixed to make them, I've got a whole bunch of color out here. Because the lily pads, if you look at lily pads, they're not all just the same green. They have different, some are warmer, some are cooler, and so I've mixed a bunch of color. First of all, our basic double primary palette. This is one that Jack developed years and years ago and he taught me to paint with. And it, it by mixing all the colors from the primaries, gives you really crisp colors on your canvas. This is mixing white, and I prefer the mixing white as opposed to the regular titanium white because it's more buttery. This is lemon yellow, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium orange, which I mix that usually from one part of the cadmium red light to two parts of the cadmium yellow medium. So that's cadmium orange, cadmium red light, alizarin crimson, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, and then our mud, which is a mixture of two parts of the ultramarine blue to one part of the alizarin crimson. And that's a basis uh, for a lot of mixtures, browns and grays, and then I also use that to sketch up my painting or my basic plan up on the canvas. This is liquid. That just is a thinner, drier, I use that if I want to make a wash or, or something. The colors over here are left over from my fish. These are my background colors. The water, this is, these are all three mixes of ultramarine blue and ivory black and white. This obviously has more white in it. This has more ivory black and this has less ivory black, more ultramarine blue. Now for my greens, and I actually have some blues in here too, this is ultramarine blue plus white. This is phthalo blue plus a little bit of cadmium orange plus cadmium yellow medium plus white. This is my mud plus orange plus a little bit of the cadmium red light. Makes a nice burnt sienna color. This is a little bit of alizarin crimson mixed into uh, this green, which is made of ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow medium. These two greens are the ultramarine blue and cadmium yellow mediums. This is phthalo blue plus a little bit of cadmium yellow medium plus white, but more phthalo blue than that. This is phthalo blue plus white. This one is, again, the phthalo blue plus a little bit of ultramarine blue plus cadmium yellow medium plus a little bit of white. These two are mixes of orange plus cadmium yellow medium plus a little bit of phthalo blue plus white. These three, these four are phthalo blue plus cadmium yellow medium plus white. So different, different shades. That's our colors for the water lilies. So let's get to painting. Okay, I'm painting, this painting I'm working on in sections because I want to work while my water is, is wet. And this, the ultramarine blue and phthalo, or ultramarine blue and ivory black are both fairly quick drying colors. So the, the background dries pretty fast. So I mixed a bunch of that color and then at night I put it in a yogurt cup like this. I save these and I, I put the paint, I can put the paint in the, and I'm just going to take a little bit and show you. I put the paint in the cup, press it on the side, then I put the water level up above where that paint is and that keeps the air from getting to the paint and it doesn't dry use that and not put it save it yet but that's that's how I keep the paint a lot of the other colors will stay two and three days out on my palette so I'm not worried about that but I want my background to be consistent I want my water to be consistent throughout the painting so I've mixed a bunch of that color and save it probably more than I need but I'm not gonna worry about the flowers right now right now I'm just working on these water lilies in this section and before I started, this is got on a gallery wrap canvas, before I started I went ahead and painted 
the edges of the canvas with my background color, with my water, the color I'm using for my water. And that way, it makes it easier to handle this. Even if that, so if that paint hasn't dried, I'm, I'm okay. So, but I want my edges wet while I'm working on these lilies. Like I say, I'll come back and do the flowers. I'm not concerned about them now. And I had to paint the fish in sections. I show that in a, another video showing painting one of the koi fish. Now I'm using a big bright brush and this is a square tipped brush and I love it because you can use that broad edge to cover a big area or you can use the side of it to or the corner of it to make details. And the lilies also are not a solid not solid green either. Particularly when they're a little wet they get little reflect or you know just little variations in color. I want this to the light is catching this lily. It's casting a shadow on the koi fish swimming down underneath. Now that tip that edge of the lily turns up. So there it makes a little shadow along that one side. Just comes around. And then the edge of that catches the light. See how I can just use this? And that catches that light. Now I'm going to come around. I'm going to move that over just a little bit. There we go. Get that rim. This, this edge here is getting a little extra light. They're not perfectly round either. I mean, they, they have a little wind blows them or debris falls or something shreds the edges and so then the, also the lily also gives a little shadow on the water. My light's coming in from the left. And you can see where that shadow continues on down over the fish underneath the water. bit of my fish color that I've saved. Come back here. I inadvertently painted over that. These koi fish are just, call it watching them, it's just, they're so relaxing to, to watch. They're so graceful. And I love how their tails and their fins and all just, they're so long, they just flow in that water. Okay, I'm going to catch just a little light on the edge of this one where it comes around there. Usually, sometimes in the center of them where the, the stem comes up, there's usually just a little lighter spot. This is in shadow. I got that too light, but just a little lighter spot there. And then this, I'm going to put another one. Like I say, just painting this in stages. 
Now this is going to, this lily's overlapping that one, so that's going to make a shadow. There. It's also going to be a little shadow there, so that lily's overlapping. not perfectly round. And now I'm taking a little of my ultramarine blue or my phthalo blue plus white. Just making some variations in that. It's going to be a little bit darker here. Let's see how I can use that big brush. Make some pretty small strokes. I am going to my smaller brush here because I'm a little finer line here. But that's I'm just going to soften the edge of this shadow just a little bit. And then this lily that's overlapping it, I'm going to let the light catch this edge just a little bit. And the light's going to catch here. Now I need to do my shadows on the water here. I didn't get this one. This this edge is casting a little bit of shadow. Now my water there is wet, is has dried. So I'm going to take a little bit of my color from the that I've saved. And I can that's too bright. Get my little darker shade here. There we go. work that since I've saved my color it matches and so I can work that into my color there and this just the, the shadows, water's a flat surface so shadows cast across the surface of the water you get we with rot, water you get both shadows and reflections I'm going to cast a little shadow off of this one up here. This one. It's already pretty dark up there. Oops, picked up some of my green. I keep wiping my brush so that I don't, don't pick up the green and make my water dirty. I want to keep my water pure. So I just that water is pretty dark up there so the shadow is not going to be quite as obvious. I made my water darker toward where the flowers are going are yeah. I don't have any brain mouth coordination today. The water is actually lighter toward my focal point, which is going to be my flowers. And then I'm going to have a butterfly on this flower here. So I made the water as we coming into the painting, it's darker on the edges and then comes in. Just like the fish are leading you to this focal point, so is the light on the, on the water. Okay, let's paint this big one up here. I'll do it more with a, the phthalo blue mixture. And it's going to be, I'm going to let it just kind of be a little darker because my flowers are going to be light. So I want this to be darker to give us a nice backdrop for my flowers.
I'll make that a little bit lighter. I'll come back and paint into that. I just want to get the whole lily covered. This one is going to be, it is going to be a little bit lighter here. And I'm going to use one of my mixes with a little bit of the orange in it, just to make this a little bit warmer right here. This edge of the lily catches the light, and then it's going to go into shadow up there. I use some of my darker color here just to give a little variations in the color here. I'm going to let this lift up just a little bit, have a little shadow. Let's see if I can duplicate that. There we go. Oh yes, that's what I want. That's what I want there. Now we're going to catch some light on this edge of the lily. Comes around. This is going to be lighter here. And that again, that comes around and acts as a pointer to the flowers. This one's going to not be quite as bright here, because I want that to lay down behind the flower. I'm going to make my, this a little darker in here. We'll make our stem appreciate you watching my YouTube videos. Please subscribe to my channel and to see the complete step-by-step -step process on this painting as well as others that I do, visit my blog. The link is in the description below. The address is also on the final frame of the video along with the address of my official website. You have a wonderful, wonderful day and thank you again for following along.